Hey physics folks, uh, first of all really I appreciate you even starting to watch this video so I know I've got uh, you know the real deal on here and I'm trying to help. I, I get the fact that uh, you know you can kind of forget about physics and be like oh I've got class tomorrow and then there's an assignment. So when you go to, this is period 6's page, but period 8's page looks the same. Um, you know you, you want to make sure that you're looking at the resources here. You're going to open up the, uh, I tried to simplify, you know, the pages that are due from the packet, so I've got that right here. And so I went over this in class Friday, but it's been a while. So, you know, this is reviewed. The way I broke this up was trying to review the stuff from last week or earlier in the week. And so if you go to the notes for today, you're not going to see them. Um, and don't forget that you can backtrack to the previous, go on to Google Classroom, backtrack to the previous assignment, and I've been putting up the notes. And so if you open up the notes, right, that's, there's going to be some helpful examples here, like here's the units. So you know, make sure that you're you're navigating Google Classroom to your advantage, so that when you're, you know, not sure how to do something, you can't remember it. That's understandable, right? So uh, we went over this about a week ago now in terms of the whole direction of the force. Um, so in any case, these three are somewhat standard, where you're using work as force times distance. You've got to be careful sometimes to get like this question, where they're giving you too much information and you're paying attention to the force that's in the direction of the displacement. So the weight actually doesn't matter for number 19. Um, however, for 20, it does. Um, and you need to find the weight of the 150 kilogram refrigerator by multiplying by 9.81 and then multiplying it by that distance. And then 21, you reverse engineering where they're giving you the work and they're giving you the distance. So you can use the F times D formula to figure out the force and then knowing that that force should be Stanley's weight, Stanley, Stan's weight, you're going to divide by 9.81 to get the mass. This is the tr tricky one where, you know, Chris is exerting an upward force while he's moving horizontally. So let's see if you can remember the trick for that one. Uh, don't forget about power. Power is work divided by time. So for the Brutus question, um, especially for the last question, that comes up for power, for part E. Um, you know, don't forget if there's no displacement, there's no work. So that, that would come up in part B. And then for part C, when he drops them, is Brutus doing any work? I'll let you answer that question. Um, and then area under the graph here, right? I'm just skipping over those other ones because it's more of the same. Now, you know, as I was, you know, I'm sitting here Tuesday morning doing, you know, some stuff, and I was thinking, like, let me make a quick video for my faithful students that will actually watch it. This one's pretty easy. In fact, if you open up the notes for today, I would just suggest you try it. Go up to the notes. If I let me just show you. Uh, sorry. And uh, if I go to this file here, this is what I mean right here. So. If you click on that, it'll get, go through the examples I did in class, not go through it, but show you them. Plus, it'll actually give you the answers to the very first question um, on this page. So you can actually check them. Unfortunately, that's the easiest one. I think it's very straightforward and broken up. Uh, number two and three are harder. Um, so determine the change in kinetic energy. Um, so, you know, I don't ask, I don't lead you to it. So you actually have to find the initial kinetic energy with the eight. So you're using a, a different new formula, 1 half mv squared, right, mass, velocity, right? And then the final kinetic energy, this toboggan is slowing down. Maybe there'll be some snow. If you're watching this now, it's probably already snowing um, or done snowing, right? And you're just getting your homework done, So, which I appreciate it. Um, so you're going to get a negative number here because it, the, the final is smaller than the bigger one. And then you're going to use change in kinetic energy is equal to work work is force times distance. And so you'll be able to, you know, set the answer to A equal to force times distance and, s and divide that force in to get the distance. Think about the minus signs, right? Slowing force. So the force is actually in the reverse direction, so you want to put a minus sign on that force. Finally, not finally, but, you know, you know, at least on this page, finally. Uh, very straightforward, I think, for A, because work is force times distance, and I give you force and distance. So that's good. But it gets much harder for B. The car is new kinetic energy. So if you haven't picked it up yet, uh, we're talking about something in class. I was th talking about the work energy theorem. Let's see if I can uh, go back to this. And, you know, this... When you see me write this right here, work net equals change in kinetic energy, that's the work energy theorem, right? And so it, that's the thing I was complaining that it's hard for people to kind of get their heads around that. Um, 
And so when you get to this point here, we figured out the work for part A, that's equal to the change in kinetic energy, so there'll be a certain number of joules. The car didn't start at rest, so the answer to A isn't the answer to B. You have to figure out the car's initial kinetic energy, and then realize that this positive work increases the kinetic energy by the number you come up with in A, and add it to the initial kinetic energy. It's sort of like if you came into school with 50 bucks, and then, you know, every teacher gave you 10 bucks that you went to during the day, that's the change. So if you got 60 bucks from your teachers over the day, you came in with 50, you leave school with 110 bucks, right? So anyway, that's pretty tricky, I think, for part B. And I didn't actually give you much space there, so it, considering how involved it is, so I apologize. So once you know the, f the new kinetic energy, you can find the new velocity by using 1 half mv squared. And, you know, the idea here, if we go back to the notes, 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 uh, see that graph is quadratic, right? We have a parabola there, and so it's because of the square in this equation right there. And so when you go to sketch in this graph, I've given you some, this, these are actually hints here. <laughs> these values here are actually hints about the answer, but you should be able to plot a zero, zero point. You should be able to plot the, the kinetic energy at 10, because you've got to figure that out really to do part B. Um, so anyway, we'll be going over this tomorrow. I really appreciate you. If you're still like tuned in and you're watching this, it's great because I think it's hard. Uh, so don't forget, I pointed this out in class on Friday. Um, this is supposed to be an easy question. Often it's not because you forget about the work energy theorem. So if you do 10 joules of work accelerating something, that work goes into the kinetic energy. Uh, let's see. This is these, I think three and f two and three are tr pretty tricky. If you cut the speed in half, because of the new equation, this new equation, if you cut, if you change it, right, the square acts on it. So if you cut the velocity in half and you square a half, what's a half squared? Half times a half is a quarter, right? So the kinetic energy doesn't just get cut in half, it actually goes down quadratically, which is a little bit less intuitive. Uh, where was I? Here we are. And then this one is pretty hard. I would suggest, because um, this is sort of reverse engineering thinking, so if you want to double the kinetic energy, doubling the speed actually is too much. It'll actually quadruple. So if you ch if you want to pick that answer, you're, you're wrong. Um, and I think if you think about the square idea and you look at the other choices, it gets a lot easier to pick the right answer. We'll talk about that tomorrow. That's a hard question. Um, and I think I've helped you enough that you can do these, right? Just number nine, let me point out work energy theorem again. Work done. You Certainly you want force times distance when you see that. You're like, work is force times distance. Or you're looking at your reference table and you see W equals FD. But again, the tricky thing that I was complaining about is people don't understand this necessarily. So if I ask you work, you can find it by finding change in kinetic energy. So when we go back and look at that question, right? You're speeding something up from rest. Um, so that you can find the change in kinetic energy. That'll be the work for number nine. So I hope that helps, and I really appreciate your dedication. I know the only people really watching this are the people, you know, sort of, you know, getting it done, and, and it's, it's hard in this environment. I'm hoping to get a couple of folks that have been procrastinating on board and using these resources that I'm trying to create for you. So uh, thank you very much. Email me as always, and make sure to check you know the uh, marking periods ending at the end of the week. So uh, if you have not submitted late assignments, you can go back and do some of those so that you don't get zeros pulling down your, your work grade for this online work. Okay? Email me if you have any questions. Thank you.